Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Local Chat, episode 139. Joining me this week, for the first time since last week, Ian Gibson. First time, last time. I'm leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> Euthanasia's legal now. <laughs> <laughs> they have euthanasia? That's incredible. Uh, moving on here. Also, we gotta move on. We gotta move on. <laughs> Jake Terrio. Oh, God, I hit the wrong button. Fuck. Am I, am I live? No, you're good. You're Give good. me a signal when you want me to start. You're good. No, I just oh, changed I to the that. thumbnail for a second. <laughs> nice. Uh, I hit the big button that said stream, and thankfully it didn't stop the stream. <laughs> Um, never stop the stream, folks. That's how you hurt your bladder. Um, and don't cross the streams. Yeah, don't cross them either, because... Well, you gotta... Yeah, you don't cross them. It's messy. <laughs> it's messy. Folks, we're here to talk about video games. We're here to talk about Starfield specifically in the second half of this show. The <laughs> latter half, they call it, there uh, in Norway. But first, we've got to hit the big old news topics this week, because... It has been so newsy. It's been noisy with news this week. What? That's right. <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to say on. something. Uh, it's been noisy with news this week, uh, and if we could all come together in unity, maybe we could figure it out. Ian, <laughs> speaking of unity. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. So um, a lot of shit happening this week, but basically unity in its perpetual pursuit of being the universally worst game engine uh announced uh some changes to its license agreement with developers i've got the forbes summary here because quite frankly it changed a lot mm -hmm. and sometimes those changes were just answers to reporters questions which then caused more changes in the policy uh, so basically, quote, originally, the announcement said that every install of a game would warrant a fee, including, according to Unity, including players deleting and reinstalling a game multiple times, as well as downloads, even if they're not paying for the game, just downloads for a demo or downloads through a cloud subscription service such as Game Pass or, you know, Ubisoft, you uh, play that type of stuff. Um, it. They, they've eventually backpedaled on this slightly. There is a revenue cap. I believe it's like $200,000, and then you start paying. They said, we're only going to charge you once. They're still very sketchy on how they are detecting the number of installs, and they won't share that information, which is real sketchy. Also, initially, it was retroactive. So it was literally any game made on Unity up to this point would start being charged. And I believe they were also going to charge you for your current player base as well. Uh, it was insane. So they've rolled some of that back. So now it's only a one time. Uh, it doesn't apply to charity bundles. It doesn't apply to subscription or free game downloads. It doesn't apply to demos, but they're sticking to it. They still want to charge people an install fee. Um, I don't mean to come from out of left here, left field here, but this is fucking wild, right? It's crazy. Really crazy. Also crazy yeah. that the CEO sold a bunch of shares days before this news hit. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, it's just awful. I mean, I think the industry has banded together to say, fuck this. Um, it's <laughs> I cannot think of I cannot think of any other game engine or even just game that charged you per install like per hour played yes in the old bbs era of games etc but the subscription I just, like, fees yes i don't but per install it's fucking wild mm -hmm. it's wild to me why would that cost go to the the developer like it's such like because it's not like it's not like unity has like their servers aren't experiencing a heavier load when someone downloads a game that was made in their engine no, um, I think yeah. they just I think it's there is a little bit of sympathy for them. Right. Which is Unity is I'm not sure certain about this, but Unity is largely a free engine. So it's one of those things where they built a very good engine. They built a very good tool. Thousands of game devs are using their engine. Tens of millions of players are using that engine to play games. Games made on that engine are making hundreds of millions, dare I say, billions of dollars. And Unreal is looking at it going, why the fuck aren't we making more money off of that? That being said, 
the way that they are implementing this is horrible. This is a terrible way to do this. There are better ways to do this. Yeah. I think you said Unreal when you meant Unity. Yeah, you meant Unity. Oh, sorry. That's okay. sorry. It's Unreal. Unreal. Clear that up for any audio Unity. listeners. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think he, he we, we all said. certainly follow a lot of game devs on oh, social yes. media. And I have seen zero who have been at all thrilled by this news and the ever-evolving state of it. Everybody, like, Unity has united every game dev I know. <laughs> Yeah. to say this sucks man and i i was thinking like part of me was thinking because i was trying to like go down like the thought pro process of this and part of me was like are they trying to capitalize on the next like among us or fall guys so when something just kicks off astronomically yeah it means they get they bankrupt the developer and get shit tons of money um like that's part of me is like I bet every time something successful comes out on their engine, they're just like, "Oh man, I wish we, I wish we had some of that cash." Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they they do have a lot of cash, though. I mean, they're they're pretty decent. They're they were making a living before the CEO stepped up. Um, it is just the days of post capitalism where no profit is good enough. There is always more profit that the company has to chase, and that encourages these terrible money chasing policies. Yeah, absolute. I nightmare. also all the all the developers I know who are currently building a game in Unity have basically said, yeah, for the next one, we're not going to use Unity. So yeah. it just seems like, you know, there, shoot, your, are... shoot yourself in the foot simulator 2K13, yeah. 2K23. Yeah, and there are there are devs and uh, games out there mid development that are being very vocal about saying we are actively looking into moving engines. Mm -hmm, like, yeah. thankfully, we're not done with the game yet, and we are literally doing out a cost analysis to say it would be cheaper for us to stop at a year to our dev and switch to Unreal or Godot or whatever than it would be to continue on Unity and end up paying a fee per install. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's... Game Maker. Game Maker Studio. Yeah. People were also worried about, like, oh, instead of review bombing, you would do a mass bot install of the game to bankrupt the people. Oh, yeah. Bad and faith then they actors came back and they were like, this. oh, we have a, we have a, we have a, we'll be writing a protection thing against that or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, how do you determine if, what if the game's yeah. just super successful? Or what if someone who's annoyed enough at the company just slowly downloads a game each, like, install each day? Like, there's so many ways to get around that and false positives. Like, what the fuck yeah. are you talking about? Yeah, it's just a terrible policy. And I think that the, the weirdest thing about this is all the news coming out from reporters and inside sources inside Unity and talking to people inside Unity who said, no, we all knew this was a bad idea. And there were multiple meetings and petitions and uh, people basically stepping forward and say, this is a terrible idea. We cannot go forward with this. And they fucking did it anyways. And it's wild. Like we all knew this would be the, it's not it's not just the reaction where it's like, eh, they'll deal with it eventually. It's like, no, 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 no. There are plenty of other options, yeah. <laughs> plenty of other better options, you know, depending on what you want the engine for. And you've just lost a significant portion of your consumer base. Crazy. Yeah, it's the, the most recent in a long line of uh, in recent years, executives showing that they just have no idea what regular people want or need. Yeah. <laughs> Or, or we'll, we'll pay tolerate. For it. Yeah, or yeah. we'll tolerate. It's um, it's fucking crazy out here. Um, because if you think about Reddit, like Reddit did the same thing recently, right? Mm -hmm. They were like, they were like, hey, we are losing money on these third-party platforms because we can't serve ads through those third-party platforms, but they're stealing a significant portion of our users. How do we kill off the third-party platforms, even though they're better for the consumer? And they raised API prices and web service access prices and, and uh, request call prices. And um, folks, it fucking worked. <laughs> like the community was upset. But at the end of the day, there's no fucking substitute for Reddit, at least not one that sprung up fast enough. And there's enough people who don't give a shit that are going back to Reddit and Reddit's back. It's not back to what it was before, but that company got away with it. 
And it was it was a pure money making move for them to do that. And I feel like for Unity, they probably looked at that and said, we could do the same thing. We know this is going to be unpopular, but we will survive it. But they forgot something. Again, going back to the Reddit comparison, there's no fucking substitute for Reddit and you can't spin up a Reddit substitute easily. But for Unity, there's a fuckload of substitutes Mm -hmm. easily. Yeah. And and I feel like there's I mean. Developers aren't using unity in the same way you're using reddit like eventually you'll you can move on to something else Mm -hmm. but for reddit you can't move on to the other reddit because that doesn't exist so yeah yeah um moving on here down the list the nintendo direct was directly beamed into our brains this morning i hope you all woke up and got those happy images from miyamoto's mind to our ears yes uh while you're drinking your coffee um a lot um, of interesting stuff good. huge announcements uh for the next couple of years zelda 4 uh mario kart 80 uh we're really looking for the geriatric metroid years. prime 4 is out right now <laughs> yeah uh f0 9000 uh it's incredible no i that looked cool it was um i mean there's some contention about this in the discord server but it was kind of like uh feels like a switch one wrap up uh sort of direct here <sighs> Yeah, and I don't Ian know what, what hard, crack y'all smoking. Ian hard disagrees here. Uh, Can we um let me tee this up a little bit, which is we know the Switch 2 is coming. There was multiple reports that at Gamescom behind closed doors, Nintendo showed off the Switch 2 hardware-esque, essentially saying this is what the Switch 2 hardware will be capable of, not necessarily the physical device, but they showed things like Breath of the Wild running at better frame rate. Uh, I believe they showed some, uh, help me out here, they showed some modern games running on it, right? Um, like current gen games? I can't uh, remember which ones. Yeah, the only thing I heard was they showed off Breath of the Wild Definitive Edition, quote unquote. And then um, the other thing was no, 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 no. I I think you're I think you're wrong in that. It wasn't it wasn't like a Breath of the Wild like we are releasing a definitive edition. It's they were playing it at 1080p, f- 60 frames per second, which Sorry. the game never did. That's why I said quote unquote. They were naming it the definitive like the oh, okay, people who okay. saw it were naming it that. Uh, and then and that's why it had also spun up into a rumor that it, it could launch with it, but I doubt it. Uh, mm-hmm. But also I think it's at the PS4 Xbox One. That what? Well, no, uh, shout out to uh, uh, Save Data David in the chat. It was Final Fantasy VII Remake. They did show Final Fantasy VII Remake running on Switch 2 equivalent hardware. Oh. Um, so again, just to be clear, it's not they're not saying these games are coming to Switch 2. They weren't showing the physical hardware. It, the main thing was look at what the Switch 2 specs are capable of doing. Um, that's basically been a confirmed report from multiple sources. So we know the Switch 2 is coming. The controversy from the Discord, however, is that (laughs) some people in the Discord and some people in games Twitter as well saw this direct and said, there it is. That's further proof of the switch to coming next year. And I don't I don't get that. But, Will, you're on the other side. Perhaps you could state the argument. Well, I I mean, I mostly uh, think that way because essentially every single thing they showed in this direct is updates to things dlc or things coming within the next year the the farthest thing out i believe was um thousand year door which was that just, just said, said 2024, 2024 which could easily luigi's be luigi's mansion luigi's mansion 2 hd said 2024 and easily could be both 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 systems whatever they want to do for that yes uh and the other reason i sort of think that uh, other than that is like no no big games coming out like no monumental stuff uh being announced here no like new 3d mario new zelda super mario iliad yeah none of that stuff cleaning up with the end of the mario kart 8 stuff and then on top of that uh ports and remasters of other games uh, the little F- zero ninety nine little kiss here, which I do enjoy. Uh, and then finally, I went oh, I went back and looked at the final Nintendo Direct before um, the Switch was announced, which I believe was April of twenty twenty sixteen. Oh, was it really? Because when was the Switch announced? Like that, it, that five minute that, thing they did. That five minute thing came out in uh, October of that year but there was there, there okay. weren't formal directs but back wasn't. then so they were just bill gotcha. standing in front of a green screen talking about things 
Um, but the last one, funny enough, had Paper Mario, uh, F Zero, <laughs> and a bunch of remasters okay, on, that's on top of theory. That's the, <laughs> the numerologists in the yeah. Nintendo Direct on top community. of on top of a, a shit ton of 3ds stuff but there's no 3ds this time around so that doesn't equate but it what was similar vibes of just 3DS? like let's get the rest of the stuff out for the wii u before the other things that are coming to the switch we can just move forward with yeah see for me it's i think you guys have forgotten this is what directs are now <laughs> like like the 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 years of having a direct come out and it's a fucking banger after banger are gone and this is what directs are now right where you just have you have a whole bunch of you have a little bit of dlc you have some third party games that fit the nintendo mold and then you have a couple first party titles side titles etc and um i disagree that they did not show any big games they showed mario versus donkey kong they showed more of super mario rpg they showed the princess peach game they showed uh, F-Zero. They showed the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. They showed Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. They showed a lot of stuff that they had either briefly talked about before or were announcing fresh. WarioWare, move it, etc. Like, I'm scrolling through this list and I'm like, this is a normal fucking direct. And I think the time frame matches up as well, where most of the directs are like, here's stuff coming in the next six months. And here's two or three things from a nebulous beyond 12 month time frame, possibly. This is just a normal direct. Now, that being said, this is a stupid argument to have because I 100% agree that Switch 2 is being announced and coming out next year. I just, t- reading the tea leaves in this direct, that just felt like a normal ass direct to me. Yeah, I guess someone who watches all of them, like, I, I, I disagree that everything you mentioned is a big title. I don't think pretty much none of those to me is a big title. Like, a big title to me is like a new, brand new like thing that is coming like i like mario party or sorry mario brothers wonder is probably the last big title i might say like even the showtime princess Peach showtime i would i might give that a little bit of credence if it was coming out way later i would change the sort of prediction of that if they were like 2024 like later in the year or something like that but as far as like the everything else you mentioned was a remaster or a slight remake um like the Mario but versus Donkey Kong is. That's what a normal. That's what a normal direct is. It's rare for them to come out with a direct that is all bangers and all brand new stuff. It hasn't oh, been like yeah, that no, for years. Oh yeah, no. But there's usually a couple of big things that are just like this is what's coming to our console now. Like Thousand Year Door, new Princess Beach game. Yeah, those are your I, big things. You may not be into them, right? But those are the big. But things. I, I just I don't think those are big things for the even for people who are into that yeah. stuff. I don't think those are big. Well, things. let me let me come at it a different way. If, if they did this direct and every single thing was coming out between now and March of 2024, like every single fucking thing had a release date in the next five to six months, I would be like, OK, if they had no big things at all, like no thousand year door, no Princess Peach stuff, nothing. And it's just like, boom, literally, this is what's up in the next five, six months. None of them are bangers or big deals. Then I would see what you guys are saying. Yeah. I think the difference of opinion is I agree with you 100% because none of them were big deals. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the difference. Yeah, there. I don't think anything measure. they showed in the direct today was a big deal. So that's fair because that's they fair. already announced Princess Peach in the last one. The only thing that could possibly, in my opinion, be considered a big deal would be the thousand year door. But I originally thought it was Origami King DLC and then when it was a remaster i was just like oh okay remaster like that quick question is mario versus donkey kong that's the first time we've seen that right uh, i think so before uh, uh, the remake yeah that's the first time we've seen that oh. but i mean it's a remake of a like a 2004 i know i i think i think the, the problem with this argument is is there is a new switch coming I think you guys are just, again, reading the tea leaves too much. And I think you're also expecting more from a direct. And so when a direct under the delivers, it's confirmation bias that they're holding stuff back. And my concern is that when the Switch 2 gets announced, right, and they say it's coming out, it's probably going to be like the Switch 1, right? Remember the Switch 1 launch titles? I believe there was six of them. Can we can we name them? It was Bomberman. It was Breath of the Wild. It was Snipper Clips. And I think there was two or three more one, two switch. And there may have been one or two more. It was one of the except for Breath of the Wild, one of the worst fucking console launches 
ever with a lineup of games. And I'm worried you guys are like, they're holding all this good stuff back. No, they're holding it back and they may let us down. I just you think know? they're not announcing in case things are just for the Switch 2 or whatever it's called. But I think I think most of everything they talked about today will probably either... Uh, probably half of everything they announced God, today I will be so. native Switch 2. Or at least a port oh. of the Switch 1. No, sorry, sorry. I mean, there's a Switch 1 version and a Switch 2 version. Like, that could run. Well, I, I mean, I don't mean to go into to con- to pure conjecture here, but I mean, we're, my gut tells me pretty certain switch 2 is going to be backwards compatible yeah sorry I, but i meant there would be a switch 2 version of the game like there was a wii u and a switch version oh okay okay like literally it wouldn't just be the switch one version port. running on the switch 2 uh yeah with some of them maybe so who knows but i'm just we'll i i think it just kind of comes down to We've always played this game. I've been a Nintendo fan. I've been a big Nintendo Direct fan for years. We've always played this game of they're going to knock our socks off with a Direct and we get very excited about it. They have not really been delivering on that for years now. And I think we're accidentally doubling our expectations because now instead of saying mediocre Direct, we're saying they're saving all the good stuff for the next one when the Switch 2 gets announced. And I don't want to be doubly fucking disappointed next time you know like just give me the switch to announcement and i'll be happy with that i don't want to also have the false expectation that they're holding back all the good games for that one as well but we'll see i hope i'm wrong it'd be great if i was wrong yeah i was i was gonna we'll save this for next week but i i was honestly gonna go back to every because i feel like every direct this year has had something pretty crazy I, i was i was just thinking about that if we were fucking crazy if we were fucking crazy, we would have a spreadsheet of every direct going back since they started list of the games and then some sort of metric of like how popular that game was. Did it hit? What was the hype? And well, what was the eventual like? Like, what was the date between direct and release? And then we could build a standard. And that would that would I don't want to say solve our argument, but I think that would be better than us just anecdotally conjecting here as opposed to having stats where it's like no that was literally a statistically average fucking direct or no that was way under they are holding stuff back yeah i will say at least the last two directs have been pretty have had at least two big big games but anyways we we can move on um also zelda came out this year which is another big thing (laughs) um okay what's next on iphone who wants to talk about iphone 15 gaming you can game on your iPhone 15 Pro, guys. Your Pro Max, your Max Pro. I, let me let me uh, tee this up a little bit, and then we can ignore it forever. <laughs> iPhone 15 got announced. Um, the 15 Pro uh, has a crazy fucking chip in it. It has a Pro Class GPU that is 20% faster than the previous version, and it is going to natively play. Uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Resident Evil Village, Death Stranding, and Assassin's Creed Mirage. And it's going to support ray tracing on the phone, which part of me is like, wow, that's fucking wild that we have a phone that supports ray tracing and can play these games natively. And then the other part of me is like, okay, but here's the problem. It's a phone, and those are not phone games. So I, the best phone games I've ever played couldn't give two fucks about ray tracing, you know? So it's like, I think they're barking up the wrong tree here. I don't know. What do you guys feel? It's going to be, if I'm waiting for the video where somebody does, somebody does a whole playthrough of death stranding walking across America. Yeah. But only if the touch control UI is in the recording of their playthrough. Oh yeah. Taking up half of it. I can't, I can't fathom navigating that game's UI with touch controls on your phone screen. God. That being said, though, playing Assassin's Creed. <laughs> that being said, we're fucking old men, and I have seen my niece and nephew play Minecraft with touch controls on a ago. phone and a tablet, and they are doing fine with it. And I fear, I fear when touch controls become the norm, because we God. are going to be left behind. <laughs> I am not. I cannot handle that shit. Yeah, I um. This is neat. I mean, I I think we had this discussion in Discord as well. I don't play phone games, so this is extra. Don't care about mm-hmm. it. Um, like, I would... I just remember... Like, I would look at Resident Evil for the novelty, maybe. Or Death Stranding. 
the same way I looked at that rage thing on the iPod touch or iPhone, whatever, like 10 years ago when unreal engine was first on the iPhone. So Mm -hmm. I think it'll be similar to that, but I think it's just a problem of these are not phone games. They're not designed for the pick up and play like one hand experience. So wow, what are we? I guess it's cheap for Apple to be like, look, we can run these and they're already made. But yeah. at the same time, and I put two phones back to back to play in ultra wide mode, Death Stranding on ultra wide. <sighs> Actually, that sounds fucking cool. Um, you know, there was like one like, guy who's like super rich and the CEO. And I was like, oh, yes, I can finally check out those new Resident Evils because I don't dabble with consoles. <laughs> when is Apple going to make a home console? <laughs> home console. Uh, anyways, pre-order is 8 a.m. tomorrow. I set an alarm. Did you? No. Which one are you getting? Um, I'm I, you know, I don't normally do this, but I'm pretty sure the Verizon deal. I can literally send them my phone and get the new phone without paying anything. So I'm gonna try to do that. I'm gonna get the 15 Pro. That Max. is wild, yeah. And only because I was like, I've been shooting a lot more on my on my phone, and I was like, I want to play with all this fucking stuff you were talking about. Yeah. And it yeah. looks cool, and if it and honestly, the USB C is what finally sold me because I can throw everything away that has well junked for up. each of your lightning cables. You got to buy a thirty dollar lightning to USB C <laughs> yeah. adapter from Apple. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. That's even better. Um, Did you see though they implemented USB C, but it's using like USB two point or two point one speeds. Yeah, nice. but on the on the pros, it's it's ten gigabit. So it's oh, OK, yeah, it's, I'm less worried about the data and more worried about the charge speed, because even though I'm wireless charging like 99 percent of the time, there are times where I'm like, oh, fuck, I got a fast charge. And depending on what standard of USB C they're using, they may not support the full fast charge. You may only be it, getting a little bit one of, of those hand crank dynamos like they have in Metro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, people at work told me it was weird. I end my day with the lowest I've probably seen my phone in the past six months is probably like 80 percent well okay but see look there's two problems number one you like your job so you're actually working (laughs) and number two you're at your home computer so if you need to look anything up you use your personal computer because you have that next to your work computer whereas for me personal stuff's on my phone and i don't like my job so i'm on my phone a lot (laughs) meetings I'll just be like, yeah, well, yeah, whatever. OK, every five yeah. minutes I hop and I'm like, look, you fuckers are off track. Here's what needs to be done. X, Y, Z. And then I go back on the phone and they discuss that for 10 minutes and then I hop back on. Sad truth. Very sad truth about my life right now. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, never mind. I was going to say, have you, have you reached the New Yorker <laughs> stage of your meeting? What's the New Yorker stage of my meeting? Was it the New Yorker guy who was jerking off during meetings? <laughs> I think that was the New Yorker. What was his name? To me, tell me yeah. something like that. Tuggy. That's what Jeez. it was. <laughs> Oof. No great thing about being as part of like the engineering org, like dev QA org is even though there is a company wide mandate to have your cameras on for all meetings, engineers, we just don't fucking follow that. We're just, nope. 99% of meetings. Nope. No camera, no camera. Fuck off. I hate seeing other people. It's a nightmare. <laughs> uh, I, whenever we have work zooms, like giant meetings, they don't like do the like people as speakers they just have everyone there and if someone has their mic unmuted and doesn't know it i have to leave the room there's so much anxiety inside of me yeah that's Um, fucked that's messed up we were back at red ventures thank god we're not anymore uh there was one guy talking about taking steroids (laughs) he didn't know his open mic mic. oh Oh my god the vice president uh yelled a lot um anyway sorry not to detract with some steroid talk um are you on steroid talk I should get on it no uh, <laughs> playstation state of play was like four hours ago um it wasn't very good i will say my favorite thing was bennett foddy's uh, another trailer for bennett foddy's new game baby legs baby, baby steps baby, feet. baby steps thank baby you steps. baby steps um it looks really good it looks fun and they made a great grappling hook joke uh in the trailer that was exceptionally funny and i think the grappling hook in the trailer is literally the one from tomb raider the new tomb raiders 
I think it's like or the grappling hook point. I think it's the same one because uh, I recognized mm-hmm. it. It's um, literally the same one because it's an NFT. Is it an they NFT? They just ported it from one game to the other. <laughs> I, didn't, um, I didn't watch the state of play, but I'm kind of scrolling through it, and it seems like I, I don't know if you've watched a lot of state of plays recently, but they've all kind of become the same. You know, you don't don't expect bangers. You know, they typically only announce things for the next six months and a couple right, things. Right, right. <laughs> I think the PS6 is right around the corner. Um, I, I think, honestly, the big problem for me is I'm not a big fan of the Sony stuff, but they had Rebirth. Oh, uh, excuse Spider-Man me. 2, look, I, I will say, no, shut the fuck up. Uh, I will say, I don't give a shit about Spider-Man 2, but some of the details I heard out of it yep. do make me a little bit interested in it because somebody was, like, going through what they showed about open world and side quest and stuff and saying, like, I didn't like it in Spider-Man, but it looks like they solved all my problems. So that's interesting. Uh yeah, I, and I you said can, to myself, what's in the collector's edition? You can get 18 inches of venom. 19 inches of venom, please. 19, oh, sorry, 19 sorry, sorry, venom. venom. Um, oh, wow, it's three inches short. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, no, I, I I actively caught myself being like, oh, um, I would rather just buy this and play this than start one or Miles Morales over again. Like, why don't I should just do that? I, I think that's right. Because one and Miles Morales are the exact same game. Um, pause for the audience to hate me for that, but they pretty much are. The story is slightly different, but they're the same game. <laughs> um, one is one is one is a very good. I don't want to say proof of concept, but they delivered on a lot of their stuff. But it's not a perfect game. It's probably like an eight out of ten. So I don't I don't think there's any reason not to start with Spider Man Two. Honestly. Um. So yeah, Spider-Man 2, uh, Resident Evil, some DLC for a remake they showed off as well as the VR. And then they showed Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is where you have the you put the baby back in and it comes back out. And I watched the trailer to that, and there's a lot in that trailer that I have already played in original Final Fantasy VII. Oh, this is this is your first time seeing Final Fantasy VII remake after having played Final and Fantasy I was VII. Like, what the fuck? How was the first game an hour? Like, what? Are you- no, the f- no. That's one of the craziest, best things about the first game. As somebody who played a little bit of it, but uh, understanding why it got all the respect it did, the first game ends when you leave the city. But they also added so much good content to it, so it's not stretched. It's not thin. They just padded it with but a the bunch motorcycle of good fight stuff. Isn't even in the first game. Oh, well, it's not. Well, because they showed footage of the motorcycle fight and like that stuff. And I was I'm like, not sure that exactly. is like, I'm not sure exactly where the first one ends, but the yeah. motorcycle fight is, is towards the end of the city anyways, isn't it right? Because it's motorcycle it's right fight. right at the end, but I, I figured leave. the first game ended okay. and at least was, I, and maybe, so. Maybe it ends on the tower. I did have to avoid work news slack because people were just posting straight up about the game. And I was like, I've never played it, please. <laughs> Uh, well, David says you're an idiot that uh, the fight you saw oh. is a different motorcycle fight and the motorcycle fight is in the first game. Oh, it is in the first game. Oh, OK, OK. I was just how am I to expect a game to have two motorcycle fights? Like, what's the point? Um, this is Devil I wish, May Cry. That's true. I wish I could get into the remake. It just I wasn't that into it. But I'm so happy that they're making this. Like, we talked about this a little bit when it came out, when I did spoilers for a game I hadn't played, but I heard the spoilers. That basically, it is not the exact same game. They are changing story beats in it, Mm -hmm. but they're doing it in a way that is, like, uh, almost, like, Evangelion-esque, where it's just, like, meta-esque, as in, like, we know what the fans expect. We're going to play with that and have story reasons to play with that and change events. And, like, I wish I was a big Final Fantasy VII fan because... This is a fucking jizz come true, right? This series, they're doing it right. Um, That fact is what made me want to make sure to play the original first. And actually is yeah. what annoyed me because I was like, oh, damn it. Like they had to make it different. So I can't just play. It. <laughs> those um, Ava rebuilds are really good, though. Yeah, I need to watch those. I am. Um, they're good. I dropped the movie. Because you only watched the series? I watched the series and I started the movie and I wasn't that into it. Um, I gotta rewatch them. I still think the best episode of that show is the first one. It's so good, that first episode. First one's great. First one's great. Uh, but I need to watch those rebuilds because those rebuilds popped up on someone just used them in a, another video I was watching. And I was like, 
And Karen was like, what's that? And I was like, oh, that's Evangelion. She's like, oh, I would watch that. And I was like, I think that's the re that's a remaster. Like, <laughs> that's like, an opening. Uh, wait, Jake, let me movies? ask you this question. How many how many Evangelion movies are there? Because I've lost count. Uh, Like, I think the original had three. Uh, it was the show and then end of Evangelion and maybe one or two that tied into that, but then there's four rebuilds. And, and, and they're remakes. Some of them are remakes of the movies, right? Of the show. Yes. As it's well. the kind of the shows and the movies all rolled into like five hours Jesus. of feature film. Jesus Christ. Okay. They're really good. I'm excited to watch it. Cause what I watched it, I watched it in like 2012, I want to say, or maybe 2010. So I watched the series plus, I think there was one and maybe two movies available mm -hmm. and maybe one rebuild so there's end of evangelion <sighs> evangelion death oh god what did i true parent that i yeah, using like death, true and then there's one other one because they're using fucking anime numbers aren't they oh yeah because the the fourth movie is thrice upon a time <laughs> god damn it. is it really Yes, That's it's so fantastic. the titles are so good, and the title card for that movie hits like ninety minutes in. It's <laughs> oh so my good. God, I had this I had this dream in twenty eleven where I watched a Tarantino movie, and it was just Power Rangers plus Mechs done by Tarantino, and it was a hard R movie, and the title card hit sixty minutes in, and the whole movie theater just applauded just stood up in applause and i i literally have been thinking about writing that movie for years <laughs> so i fucking love a light a late title card that hits. it's so late it. and it's so good oh god i love which, that which movie is that <laughs> uh, i'm sorry Gilly, i think <laughs> Sorry, David in the chat is saying the fourth movie is 3.0 plus 1.0 thrice upon a time. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it's incredible. so good. Only the Japanese are like a nice enough respected culture to get away with bullshit <laughs> like that. I, you know, I liked Evangelion until that one episode that had about where he's going to leave on the train and Miss Misato goes to, the goes to pick him and up. He... And it's oh. about a no exaggeration five minutes still shot with the japanese cicadas making noise in the background oh, I and you're love just that. like that's the that best shit. that's the best stuff <laughs> it's so good did, did, but at some point you're just like did i pause it like something no, happened the, do you guys do you know about the story with tsunami evangelion and the elevator scene oh yeah that so, people like didn't realize yeah, yeah, like there's like stupid. there's a scene in Evangelion where they're in the elevator and it's an awkward moment. I think it's between Ray and uh, Asuka and there's an awkward moment. It's like 30 seconds. It's basically like a still frame. And when they aired it on Toonami in the early 2000s, they got a bunch of complaints because people were like, your stupid image froze for like 30 seconds. And they were like, no, that's part of the show. That's oh, the show. Well, on this note, sorry, about it. not to derail us even further. But when when I went opening night to go see The Last Jedi um the theater manager came in before the start of the movie and was like hey everybody just i want to let you know there's a point in the film about you know an hour and a half in where there will be about 20 seconds of silence this is deliberate this is the filmmaker's choice so don't come freak out and tell us that our our um you know sound system broke and when that moment <laughs> happened when you know uh, laura dern light speeds the ship through Andy Serkis's ship and it's suddenly silent because you know light moves faster than sound I'm like how are people so stupid that they didn't <laughs> yeah. realize this was a creative choice because then once the sound comes back in and it's like that huge explosion how how stupid yeah how, how stupid they, they did, can you be the, the same thing happened before uh, the last Skywalker, but they came up and they said, hey, everybody, we just want to let you know they had an event in Fortnite last week where they said Palpatine has <laughs> returned. We're not cutting off the first start of the movie. That's where the movie starts. You just need to know that if you haven't played Fortnite. I, <laughs> I love just, it. Uh, Jake, to your story, that means those people sat there. It went silent. The realization <laughs> moment you're saying where the sound comes back. And they still didn't get it in, in order to go complain. complain. Yes, like, because the, the broad theater-going audience nowadays is just Let's not make it sexist, dumb. Jake. Let's not make <laughs> it sexist. 
<laughs> it's a lot of broad, men like that broad. <laughs> the w- <laughs> I can't come up with any better adjectives that will also not, not be woman troublesome. broad, just broad. Female. Girl, no. I think we call them. The Those female are... movie going audience. <laughs> not my views. Jesus Christ. Oh, broad. Great up. Can we just jump to Starfield? We're off oh, the rocker now. Yeah, right, we can jump to Starfield. Okay, folks, if you don't want to get spoiled on Starfield, I made a little graphic here. Oh, I got to transition it. If you don't want to get spoiled about Starfield, then this is the Starfield image for spoilers. So you can fast forward in case I do remove this image, but I'm not probably going to. Uh, so Starfield spoilers. Yeah, we're probably going to close the episode out with this. So if you if you yeah. care enough about Starfield that you care about spoilers, thank you for listening. If you're on the fence, Bye, stick around. Starfield's not worth playing at all. So <laughs> just like not a joke. It's not worth caring about Here's spoilers. A free spoiler. It's not worth finishing the story. So I'm playing stay. Oblivion now instead. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed also I saw at some point this week you were playing Skyrim. Um, I, I was playing a Obli- uh, Skyrim for capture for work. And then mm. I was playing Oblivion legitimately. But also in my Skyrim, Skyrim save, I was like, what if I just kept playing this? Like, this is even better. It's better. Okay, uh, where do we want to start? Um, let's start with Jake. We've said our piece multiple times. Oh. Jake, this you have the mic. Tell us about your Starfield experience. Yeah, well, I guess it, it, I'm, I'm, I think, the target demo for this game being like, space nerd and especially i know that they during a lot of the marketing they were throwing around the term nasa punk um i've also seen kind of the art style of this described as cassette futurism where it's like like yeah. alien that kind of like there's there's you know there's some crts and there's some like you know old schooly stuff just kind of floating around in this universe um but i was going into it a bit trepidatiously because my only big bethesda and bethesda adjacent rpg experiences have been skyrim and fallout new vegas Mm -hmm. um which i know new vegas i enjoyed a lot narratively but not a lot gameplay wise um and i only got maybe 10 hours into skyrim before i just yeah, I just kind of fell off of it. Fantasy is not necessarily my thing, but I also just wasn't getting gripped by the narrative. Um, and I'm very much a narrative first guy. Yeah. Um, and so I went into this and, and as I expected, I was kind of chafing against some of the RPG systems. Um, but then the story just blows, man. It's not good. I just, I'm not sure what you mean by the story blows, because for me, the game blows. So, well, <laughs> so, okay, so what, I'm what particular me... about the story? Well, first of all, can you guys do me a favor here? Because I played roughly the first third of the main story quest. I played about 18 hours. I'm like level 20 or something. And I, 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 at Will, Will was like, hey, you should at least get to this story quest mm-hmm. later on. And I literally played it for 45 minutes this week, coming back to it. And I just couldn't fucking handle it anymore. Mm. So, so my way of saying, I don't know what the story beats of this game are. So sure. can we just can we just lay that out real quick for me, if you yeah. don't mind? Okay. So Will are you or do you want it? Do you want to do it? Or should I No, do it? you can do it. Okay. So the the you know, you start off, you're whatever, you know, no name podunk mining person, you discover an alien artifact, and then this, you know, constellation, this international inter- intergalactic exploration agency is like, hey, you found something cool. Do you want to join our pretty sweet club? Um, <laughs> and then they send you off to do a bunch of busy work to find more artifacts, because obviously, unless you're a total idiot, you can see that these artifacts are creating some kind of piece of geometry that will presumably do something yeah, once you find the them contact on. three rings yeah, yeah. It's, you know three spinning rings blah 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 the a uh, major story beats are then after finding enough of them aliens show up and are like hey those belong to us you can't the have them the starborn yeah. show up yeah and then uh, you have to go find one on Earth. This is the mission that Will said you should get to. They send you back to NASA. They send you to Florida 
down to NASA hey! and you go, yeah. Hey! You, even though they don't have like you go there and it's just like a, a launch pad with a rocket. There's no like ver- vehicle assembly building or anything what iconic. The fuck. Yeah, it's super weird. Like if, especially if there's iconic like, stuff, it's launch tower and VAB, and that's it. Yeah, Everything else it's is such superfluous. like basic geometry, but still really iconic. But no, they did they didn't have that. Um, Fucking. Idiots. They send you to NASA to get another artifact, and that's where you realize that they developed grav drive technology to get around from this artifact. But the uh, the gravity waves from all those tests are what sheared Earth's magnetosphere away, which is why Earth is uninhabitable and why now everybody is all through all these stars. Thanks. So um, at some point, I can't remember if it's before or after that, one of the starborn shows up and starts killing everybody because they want the artifacts. It's after because you, you have might... to choose to stay at the lodge or go to the eye or go up to the eye. Yeah. So in what do you mean by everybody? Are they targeting constellation folks? Or are they just constellation constellation because okay. they want the artifact okay. in my game? I don't know if this is the way it is in all games. I chose to go up to the eye because I didn't like anybody who was in the lodge. So I went up to the eye and then when yeah. I came back down, Sarah was dead shortly after this Good it, in about the same amount of time as in rise of Skywalker, you think that Chewbacca dies and then you think, and then they show you that Chewbacca lived. Oh, you no. find out that Sarah is not dead. She's one of the starborn. No, she is no, just about to from that. another get yeah, from yeah, yeah. another Your parallel Sarah universe. Dead. This is a multiverse game, Ian. Fuck off. Yeah, that was the moment where I was like, <laughs> okay, we've gone no, off heard, the rails. I heard multiverse this is, is so real stupid. hot right now. Multiverse is real hot right now. We should do a sub pixel multiverse. <laughs> okay, so Jake, I have a question for you. So in uh-huh. mine, I stayed at the lodge because they didn't make it very clear how you go to the eye. Like, I didn't know I could just fast travel to the eye. I was like, sure. They're like, they, they're like, oh, they need help with the eye, but you should stay here at the lodge and help. So I thought they meant help at the lodge, then go to the eye. And then go to the eye, yeah. So, unfortunately, Uh Sarah lived in my universe, which is the worst universe. And Sam died, died, and his daughter, the little bitch, blames me. And I was just like, this is not what I wanted. But also, I didn't care. Um, So, so... that's just my situation. Now, now we can go back. Yeah. So the Starborn, there's there's two. One of them ended up in my game. I don't know if this is also different, but one was Sarah and one was the leader of the religious faction that I was affiliated yep. with. That's, the Order, that's... the Sanctum Universal or whatever. Yeah, I think it's always um, him. Okay, because he's yeah. voiced by um, the guy who plays Dave in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Dave. John um, Cleese. Yeah, John Cleese. That's it. Um. Okay, so then you have Dave to girl. pick a side. You have to pick one of the starborn who you're going to align yourself with. There's no option to not align yourself with somebody. Um, and then you know you pick up more artifacts, and then you get to the end. They all converge into like a singularity called the Unity. And um, oh, that's oh, how you start New Game Plus. You go now. I'm remembering it. The lodge thing happens, you go to their ship, you meet both of them, they say, choose between us, you don't have to choose now, but first go to Earth, then you go to Earth, you exit NASA, they're both there, and then they say choose. Yeah, the order's not um, important. No, no, I know it's, it's not important, very stupid. <laughs> but I was just trying to remember that uh, yeah. for my own edification. Um, okay. But what are the Starborn? Are they aliens, or are they just people from alternate universe? They they're are just alien. people from alternate universes but they but they do, muddle the waters by implying because you can ask your you meet yourself at the end of the game and you have a dialogue exchange with yourself um and one of the things that i did i picked i'm like well where like where did these artifacts come from and they muddy the waters by being like they came from the creators and you're like who are they <laughs> um so it's it's real stupid and um but they don't warn you that if you start new game plus you lose everything, everything. except your stats and your levels no items yeah. no ships yeah that's terrible but jake you're supposed to speed run the main quest and get to main new game plus no bad it's I'll bad say it again. i think um, let's let's be clear the right decision is play this game for 10 hours and then stop <laughs> then stop pretty playing. much uh, right. um yeah however there were, I think, as with a lot of these Bethesda RPGs, some of the side missions I did actually really like. Um, there was a really stupid one 
where uh, the a guy who runs one of the Chunks franchises, it's like, my franchise is all out of the special sauce. Everybody wants the special sauce, but I can't get any. No one's willing to ship it to me. And you're like, I'll go pick some up for you. I'll go to Aquila City and get some special sauce from their Chunks branch and bring it back to you. And I'm like, that's so dumb, but it's charming. So I'm going to roll with it. Um, I liked the, uh, I mean, we talked about this kind of in the Discord. There's, you can pick up a, a note somewhere early in the game that leads you to a secret base. So where fucking there's... sick of hearing about that side quest. I, I have nothing <laughs> against that side quest. It just feels like it is the, uh, this is an exaggeration. It feels like it is the only good side quest in the game. No. And it's because, it's because they spent main quest time on it and they put it in your face. That's a yeah. fucking main That's quest. That is not why. a side quest. Like, like the day after Starfield came out, uh, I was on TikTok and I unfortunately saw a video by fucking Greg Miller. And he's like, I just played the greatest side quest I've ever played in any video game. And then he just described the Mantis side quest. And I'm like, okay, that does sound kind of cool. And then I realized it's just a fucking main quest. They shove it in your face from the start. And I, just, I'm sorry. I will say they don't. I've got some others. They don't necessarily shove That's it in fair. your face at the start. It's because it went around at every uh, publication and they shoved it in everyone's faces when the game first I came don't, out. I don't think so. No, because it's 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 like it's like the second main quest that you pick up a note. It's like the first right. note you pick but up. But I would say like probably 75 percent of us in the discord didn't do it or in the Slack channel in at work did not do follow it through on until it. we decided to make it. That's fair. Out. So uh, the only reason um, I did it is because Tom told me to go do it. Like I wasn't going to do it. Yeah. Uh, okay. I do. I did have some others to pick from. There was, well, um, I just, I, I wanted to finish the main story stuff. Sure. Um, Wait, that's so they, not it. No, no, no. So that's pretty much done. I, I did find the neat thing that they hid behind beating the game, which is every time you do the new game plus, you can get rolled into a different universe that is actually marginally different in a somewhat neat way. Like, uh, people didn't map out everything because I think it takes a lot, but the like your constellation can change. So you can go into a universe where all the constellation members, I think, are you or different versions of you. There's one where Sarah Morgan's a plant, which I found extremely funny. And then there's just other versions where like stuff went wrong. Like there's one where Walter was already contacted by a different Starborn. So they were like oh, waiting so for you different. to ambush you and like and so so basically every time you do a new game plus the main story has gone because you just have to go the the crux of it is for for millennia or however starborn have been you go to, you get to your new universe you collect all the artifacts fight with the other starborn and then you get out with your artifacts and leave the rest behind supposedly um so you're you're just it's a always terrible fighting over that which is a really stupid it's thing really because stupid what if you get into a universe where everything's gone or what if like is every universe but where, just where built you, to this where are you going do you just hate each new new universe so much that you're just fucking quantum leaping into the next one well, hoping so it takes is, you home or yeah something? that's one of the things sorry will you no go? no i was i was gonna say i forget what they're trying to do it's, is it quantum it's leap? literally just that it's just it's just collecting all the things and then leaving. I never found any deeper explanation for it than that. It was like, we've gotten these new powers. Let's just play around with them. And it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's to me, it, it starts to run against the grain of the themes that they're trying to play with. Um, because, well, hold on. I, I, I actually, I took a bunch of screenshots right at the end. I don't end. know. I mean, I, I think I disagree with the the contrary theming because it feels like through all of the mechanics, all of the quests, all of the mechanisms they have in this game, the theme is what if we fucking half assed this? And for them to half ass the story, it's right in line, you know? Um I, I will say while you're looking that up, I do actually agree with your point about side quests though, where I do think they did a much better job of horizontal scaling with this game. And what I mean is uh, I always felt like in uh, Skyrim, Fallout 4, etc., um, the side quests were there, there was kind of tiers, right? There's the main story quest, there's side quests in major areas, and then there's quests that you randomly come across or like this person needs something or like random events. And I don't think that third tier was ever very good in Bethesda games. But in this one, I think they did do a really good job of like you'll be walking through a space 
and you'll hear conversations and somebody's like, oh, I can't believe that orangutan got loose in the zoo. And then it's just like, boom, new quest. Check out the orangutan at the zoo. I never followed up on any of those, but I feel like they did at least make it easier and give you a better variety and quantity of all that side and tertiary quests as opposed to having to constantly go around and talk to people. So I feel like they did at least horizontally fill the game out with content. Uh, yeah, will... I've got I've. Well, I, I just want to say quick, but I, it might not be very quick. I will say, Ian, that stuff has always been good in Bethesda games until Skyrim, where they were like, what if we just auto generated these quests for you every single time? Oh, and then they did that gotcha. in Fallout 4. And then in Starfield, to their credit, they did the they mission back. boards as those. And then people there's still those just because even in oblivion you'll walk around and people will talk about things you go and talk to them like it's not the same obviously but you go and talk to them yeah, and pick yeah. up that quest but the that quality's way, good because you heard it yeah like yeah so anyways jake continue um i couldn't find the screenshot i was looking for a, a specific dialogue branch at the end of the game but um on the note of uh side stuff that i enjoyed there's a random, a random, a sim, like you were talking about, hear somebody say something and then a little thing pops up on your screen. It's like, go check out the thing. Somebody's like, hey, this, you know, weird scientist jabroni's fiddling around with this tree in New Atlantis. He says something's oh, wrong yeah. with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's what a tree. Yeah. Well, I, this was both nice and then frustrating because I did a background in Starfield. xenobiology because I wanted to do kind of, I wanted to role play what, I was trying to do with No Man's Sky 1.0 where I was just, I was really, I was just going out and exploring and living on the land and checking things out and just, you know, doing my thing. Um, and then Starfield's like, well, what if you shoot everything and you can't do anything else? Um, so America? I got this, uh, hey, somebody's a problem with the tree. And I'm like, oh, let me go check that out. Let me see what's wrong. So it was this quest where you find out that these trees that are growing in New Atlantis are starting to uh generate rhythmic sound pulses right Ooh. now they're low enough that nobody will hear them but they're increasing in frequency and, and strength and so eventually they might you know shake the whole town apart or shake the whole planet apart i'm like wow that's interesting and so he's like yeah i got all this data we're gonna sort through it come back later never at any point through the rest of the game was I ever prompted to return to that man. <laughs> I even went back to him several times wow, to be like, hey, is there, there, is there more to this? So maybe there is more to that if you play another, you know, 20 hours. But because um, I was trying to seek out stuff to role play as xenobiologist. And that was the only time I ever like actually <laughs> engaged with that background trait. Apart from in one other quest, uh, the the Titanfall main mission, Titanfall uh, quest. Ian, I don't know Affecting if you got that far. From Titanfall two. Yeah, there was. There's one where you can you can shift in and out of dimensions to navigate through this uh, like oh, labyrinthine. Yeah, and on the bad side of it, there's all these creatures that have infested the thing, and you can't avoid them apart from shooting them. And back in the the uncorrupted version, I was able to to ask the security officer i'm like hey do you have any guns i can use to take care of and then it had like xenobiology and i was able to identify specifically what creature it was and like that's a mm -hmm. heinous use of my xenobiology background <laughs> asking someone for a bigger gun to kill these things um but there are two other uh, some side missions that I did like. One where I randomly stumbled across like a, a intergalactic halfway house of former convicts who were trying to build like a little uh, like a peaceful community on this planet where oh, okay. people can get back on their feet after getting out of prison. Did it? Did it have you shoot them all? I hope so. I mean, that was an option, but I didn't do that. <laughs> what happens is. You you stumble in and they're like the people that are still the there's construction workers who are building the place and then there's the convicts the former convicts who are already there and um, you stumble in and one of the the construction foreman is like one of you kidnapped our guy and you're like whoa 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 what's going on and they're like this guy's missing he's gone we don't know where it is it was obviously the felons and you're like okay hold on let me just let me go find him let me go track him down so you go find the guy 
he says, yes, I was kidnapped. He says some things that you will give you clues as to who might have actually done this. Turns out there's two rogue bounty hunters who are just kind of like have a chip on their shoulder about all these ex felons all being in one place. And so they're trying to kind of meticulously pick them all off. And so you can mm. go and I heavily specked into persuasion to try to avoid shooting people in the head as much as possible. And so I was able to persuade these bounty hunters to just leave this place alone. Um, and, you know, everybody was super thankful. The construction workers were thankful. The ex-convicts were grateful. And then one of them's like, hey, go. Our benefactor is going to want to hear about what you did here. You know, go back to Aquila City and go talk to them. And so it turns out that it's this wealthy CEO of one of the gun manufacturers. And she's like, thank you for peacefully resolving this situation at the space halfway house. Here's a gun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um then did either of you go to the crucible it was super far out of the way so i'm going to be surprised if either of you did no what okay is i stumbled into this place called the crucible and a woman runs up to me or first there's a distress call you intercept a distress call and you go down and this robot's like the facility is under lockdown you know we we need help this is the celebrities right well, yes. Yeah, so I walk in okay. and this yeah. lady's like, hey, there. you know, yeah, sorry, this there's all this stuff's going on. You should go talk to Franklin. He knows what's up. And so yes. you go and you walk in and there's this guy in a, in like an old timey suit and you walk up and he's like, oh, hello. He's like, I'm Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the president <laughs> of the United States. I'm like, what? What is going on? And so it's this facility of clones. Somebody so has taken <laughs> genetic material funny. from myriad. There's Genghis Khan is there. Amelia Earhart is there. Amelia Earhart. Mm -hmm. I was able to recruit to my crew to be the pilot on my ship, which <laughs> may be a bad idea, but I thought that was kind of fun. She got um, most of the way there. Come on. Yeah. Now. And so that was, you end up going to this other facility uh, where there's like factions that have sprung up amongst. And so you have to pick one of them to decide well, who's going to run this experiment for the rest of it. Can I say um, the but best that was, part? That was pretty good. Is, is the guy comes up. He's like, oh, I'm a famous cowboy. Who did he say? Oh, yeah. There's a guy role-playing as Wyatt Earp. Okay, so he says he's Wyatt... Oh, no, no, don't, serial don't, don't, killer. Don't, don't, oh, sorry. Let me tell it! God damn sorry. it. Sorry. So he's like, oh, I'm Wyatt Earp. And he's like, oh, let's go on a patrol because you have to go to the facility. So you go, and like, this is five seconds after talking to FDR. They're like, oh, mm -hmm. God, there. Also, there's not Cleopatra, but there's Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan? Genghis Khan, and yeah. then there is a queen... Uh, uh, whose name escapes Nefertiti me. Nefertiti or something like that? It's not Nefertiti. Uh, uh, anyways, so he's like, oh, just come, we'll go on a thing. And he's like, obviously, he's like, we'll meet at this cave. And so you're just like, what the fuck? So he like leads you to a cave and he goes, sorry, I'm not actually Wyatt Earp. I'm H.H. H. Holmes. And he just starts to kill you. And I was just like, what is going on here? Like, you didn't, ha there was no threat to you currently. Like, you're just a character leading me off to tell me this. Like, you're in a serial my, killer. I sh should have woken up to you trying to kill me or something. In in my version, he was a, a bit more reluctant, where he, he framed it as like, hey, I gotta talk to you. Don't, I gotta talk to you about FDR, but we can't do it here. He might be listening in. And so he takes me out to the cave, and then he's like, I know you're going out to the facility. I need to tell you, you know, I'm not Wyatt Earp. I'm famous serial killer H.H. H. Holmes. And I know you are going to find that out if you go to the facility and start digging through all our files. Um, and again, I tried to persuade him out of it, but Same. it didn't work. Um, and he he blew himself up. Um, but what's what was funnier with that is in some of the documents that I found in the facility, there were ones that were like, you know, don't don't trust Bill Hickok. He's not who he says he is. And I'm like, so this guy keeps coming back and picking a different Western, oh, yeah. <laughs> Western yeah. person to be. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, those were uh, the side, the specific side quests that I like. There were some interesting encounters that I liked. I docked on a station whose artificial gravity was malfunctioning. So sometimes oh, yeah. it was full G and then sometimes it would be <laughs> zero G. So there was actually moments where you had to like wait for it to be zero G so you could go up an elevator shaft 
to get to a thing to unlock a door to get you know another gun um but um yeah i think the biggest the biggest thing for me besides just the kind of preposterously flimsy main quest was how superfluous all of the travel was like for a game oh, yeah. that's yeah. Obst- obst- uh, ostensibly about space exploration you are given the option to spend so little time in space and i actually wanted to I could read a quote for you um from an indie developer i follow uh who i've played some of their games and they have uh, peter moorhead has a a procedural generation space exploration game coming out it's in development but sometime in the future and he said for a game where you're uh, uh, ostensibly role-playing as a space explorer scavenger bounty hunter whatever having so little material relationship to your spaceship and to the vast distances you travel is a completely whiffed opportunity setting down on a barren planet unbuckling from the pilot seat watching the exit ramp slowly drop and walking out into the light of a new sun these aren't just busy work they're meaningful moments in the story you're writing through play sometimes more friction is better and that yeah i just i i like kept trying to spec into spaceship design to you know make my spaceship because i wanted to build the nostromo that's what kind of what i set out to do with this game and then at some point i'm like i'm spending so little time actually engaging with the spaceship what is the point of making it any better there were a couple of quests where they specifically send you to do space combat um but it's possible you just never engage with those yeah and then the combat just, sucks anyways the ship combat sucks yeah it's i i was not a big fan of it i i grew to appreciate it towards the end once i had kind of boosted up my ship a little bit but yeah it the flight was weird um it's uh the lock picking is good the lock picking is good i see i i was just telling karen because i was playing oblivion and she was like oh that's the lock picking in oblivion and i was like yes I don't mind the lock picking in Fallout and Skyrim, but I like and the thing Oblivion does is the lock picking is like a little puzzle game and you get a pretty good reward. Starfield, the lock picking, same thing. It's a little puzzle game. It's great. I love it, but it's never a good reward on the other side of it. So it's just like, yeah. it's not worth it to do this. Like, I, like those puzzles become fairly trivial, uh, but just like getting up to that point, it's just like, Oh, I don't want to do it. And you'd never have enough digipicks. The, the digipick economy is broken and it's stupid and I hate it. Um, um, but I, I just wanted to run through um, a quest and something else that I can't remember right now, if that's okay. Uh, which is the first contact quest. Which this quest starts out pretty good. There's a there's You land on this paradise planet and they're like, hey, there's a fucking ship in the sky and it's weirding out all the customers down here on our paradise planet. Go talk to them. So you go up to the ship, and they're like, hey, we're a colony ship from Earth, and this is our destination. But clearly you guys have invented faster than light travel while we were in route. Can you go back down and be like, oh, they will live on the other side of the planet or something like that. So you go back down, and they're, they're like, absolutely not. Here are your three options. You blow them up. You get them a new grav drive. Or they work as slaves for us, indentured servants. And you're like, like clearly, perfect, perfect. What's the problem? So I go up and I'm like, listen, I'll go get you a grav drive. So I go buy a grav drive for 20,000 credits, which is nothing in this game. And so I, I deliver the heart of the gravity drive. They fly away. And then you get like an update to go find them. So then Tom was like, or, or and then I believe the indentured servitude, as far as I know, they just become indentured servants. You're good. And then Tom was like, oh, let's do a video. Like what happens if you blow them up? Is it like Megaton? Where, like, you can go back and see it and everything. So he does the thing, blows them up. You, like, set the reactor to overload. It blows up. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Happen Like, it just blows up, and that's it. It's over. And you go back down. To- and I typed to him. I said, listen, the ship blowing up should have been. The ship blows up. Everyone of the colonists are dead. Lose. And all the wreckage from the blown up ship lands at the paradise, ruins the paradise. Yeah. That's the lose lose. And mm-hmm. and he just goes, You just wrote a better quest into the game. <laughs> I was like, it's not that hard. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. It's not that hard. And I think this is one of the things about if I may expand the conversation a little bit, which Mm -hmm. is Baldur's Gate 3 is fantastic because Baldur's Gate 3 would give you it may give you only three options, but the way that it presents those options feels like there's more options there or they fit your character better, etc. And any one of those options you pick will drastically change the world and have the impact mm. such as you're talking about as opposed to, oh, you picked that option? Oh, OK. So what? You know, it happened. So what? Nothing's changed. And it's just like the people out there like acting like these Starfield quests. It's, I'm seeing quotes like people saying this is the best single player game I've ever played. The exploration's incredible. The best no. RPG. I'm, 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 I'm making all these tough choices and tough decisions. And it's like, fuck off. They're not real. Like Baldur's Gate 3 showed that you can have good writing and consequences. And we're supposed to take this fucking 10, 15 year old game design a month after Baldur's Gate 3. Fuck off right. out of here. Um, I um, will say the other good sorry just one more thing the other actually okay. good quests I didn't finish this quest line but in all accounts I think it's pretty good is the Crimson Fleet stuff is neat the first time you get caught with contraband in a UC system yeah. they take you to the ship and they're like oh go do you're gonna be our spy in the Crimson Fleet it's very like uh, Dark Brotherhood Thieves Guild whatever and so you go over there and they're like okay listen we're in the key which is the administration part of the prison that used to be down on the planet. The planet prison is called the lock. Awesome. Cool names. Um, yep. there's a guy who used to be in there that escaped and caused the riots. And he went and found a ship that was full of money. So you go down into the lock. It's like very alien. Um, I was uh, a big fan of that. Yeah. Quest. It's a really good mission. You go and find all the thing. The, the, you get set bolts, get, groups get separated at one point the guy you're with is like come on let's let's take delgado down who's the leader of the crimson fleet and like let's kill him and then you can like kind of side with him or you can turn on him and he actually comes back later and fights you randomly in a spaceship fight which is really well done and then um so you do all that and delgado's like oh yeah and then you go onto like a luxury ship and you like hack into stuff fight people get uh, all the codes and stuff from the luxury ship cruise ship but after you finish the luxury cruise ship mission the cruise ship is gone you can never go back there and there's an earth location on the cruise ship to be able to go to the uh the tallest building in the world burj uh, khalifa khalifa uh to go there you have to have the book on that ship and it no longer exists in my game um but all of this to say i didn't finish the storyline it was going very well the like ship is on is in a gas plant gas giant so you have to like figure out a way to get down there and that's where i'm at but if you side with the crimson fleet it trivializes the entire game because every outpost you go to that has crimson fleet they're just sitting around and you just walk every single artifact i collected for that main campaign i walked past everyone and picked up the artifact and fast traveled out (laughs) yeah so that that makes sense to me. And the reason why is because early in that game, I was talking to somebody and they were like Crimson Fleet. I'm like, who's the Crimson Fleet? And they were just like, oh, it's what we just call any criminal. They're the Crimson Fleet. And I was like, oh, fuck. And it really is. It's just a generic placeholder for bad guy. And I'm sure they have story, et cetera, through that play through that plot line. But after that hearing like, hey, if you side with the Crimson Fleet, it trivializes the game. I'm like, yeah, I bet because the Crimson Fleet is just the generic fucking stand in for enemies in a majority of the of the game. I mean, there's the spacers and the ecliptic as well. But I was just surprised they weren't as like filled out like i expected like some of those yeah. to be them but no crimson fleet is the specific crimson fleet well faction. and there's house i don't know what Varun. that npc is talking about oh and house, house Varun Varun well. snake worshippers who i kind of expected would have like a home planet or something maybe they do i never found it and i was never directed I found to a it. legendary Varun ship who blew me up me too like, like 10 times way too powerful <laughs> did not kill it nope anyways jake you were gonna read us a quote from your book sorry no yeah i was so so i was i start i re- was started rereading my book of stanislaw lem essays stanislaw lem of course being the author of eden solaris the invincible and um he had um an an essay from 1970 called on the on the structural analysis of science fiction where he kind of outlined two forms of science fiction which he called real science fiction and pseudoscience fiction real not being like um 
one like that's the better version but like that one's more deal like that, that would be more like hard sci-fi dealing with mathematics and like real concepts and then pseudoscience fiction he brought he cited like um kafka's the metamorphosis of a man who wakes up and one day he's a bug um uh-huh. and so he was saying um that Real science fiction is dealing with like the empirical things that can be observed and pseudoscience fiction takes those forms and then is much more about the subtext of what these fantastic impossible things are saying. Um, and he was saying, uh, what if everything in a science fiction work is fantastic? What if not only the objects, but also the problems have no chance of ever being realized as when impossible time travel machines are used to point out impossible time travel paradoxes? In such cases, science fiction is playing an empty game where he basically mm-hmm. is like, if we're just using the trappings of sci-fi, spaceship, time travel universe to just kind of paint a pretty picture and not have it say anything he's like that's we're not do we're not participating in worthwhile storytelling anymore and that's yeah. really what i felt that this game did like i i have no idea what the overarching cosmologies or philosophies of any of the main factions are i really have no idea like at, at so many points in the process of gathering these artifacts um there would be times where I'm like, why am I doing this? And everybody in Constellation was like, because we have to explore. We have to keep going. And I'm like, that's dumb. No. Especially once yeah. then you get to the point where they're like, the grav drive killed Earth. And I'm like, okay, so we're explicitly saying that humanity's hubris in the face of uh, exploring the stars is what doomed Earth to its final death. And we're still being like, yeah, we got to go. We got to keep pushing. Even though we don't understand this, we have to keep going. And there was one moment where before you know that the Starborn are people and they just the first time they show up and they're like, hey, those are ours. Don't mess with them. I had a dialogue option that was like, sure, take it, have it. And and I'm like, that's what I would do if like, you know, because, you know, Hazel being a museum educator, there's a lot in there's a lot of talk in museum spaces right now about like repatriating artifacts to where they need to go. And so I'm like, I want to role play as somebody who would, you know, quote unquote, do the right thing. Be like, yeah, this isn't mine. I stole it. Have it back. But the billionaire who was riding shotgun with me was like, <laughs> no, we got to warp out of here. We're going to keep it and we're going to keep yeah. exploring. And at the end of the game, when I'm talking to myself, there's a beat where my other self or whatever is like, yeah, well, did you have any regrets? I'm like, yeah, bro. Basically every choice, the main quest forced me to make. Yeah. I regret it. Um, So just really, really just a a very empty narrative in my mind. Yeah. Um, And I think, you know, to your point, I I was thinking about, it's like the, they keep trying to paint these caricatures to different, people or different factions but they don't commit they're so fucking milk toast about it right so like you have the free star rangers of aquila city and i went down that plot line and i was like okay so you know surface level it's like texas texas rangers right Mm -hmm. well are you are you going to get into like the appropriation um and racism against the indigenous people are you going to get into like ultra conservatism etc and it's like no not really we're not going to do any of that. And, yeah. and, and and then even they keep saying like, oh, these corporations, corporations, you know, maybe they're bad. But then they weren't explaining how they weren't showing why they weren't getting into like the deep ethical moral dilemmas of it. And it was just fucking real surface level sci fi mm-hmm. paintbrush stuff, but no depth underneath it. Exactly like you're saying. Yeah. And I, I was thinking, I'm like, is this just the necessity of trying to make a game that can be all things to all people. But then like, but no. like new Vegas had a depth of, of thematic storytelling. Yeah. But new Vegas um, doesn't easy count. Answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the easy else. answer. But Bethesda is not capable of making a great video game. And they're not capable of making a game outside of this template that they've created that for themselves. And they're not capable of improving on no. their own fucking template. I think they're capable it. of it. I don't think they will. Be. I, I don't think they could capable, if man. they tried. 
because the, I, I would say the quote unquote simple stuff, like think about it, storytelling. I'm not going to say storytelling is easy, but you are not fighting against the engine. You're not fighting against like, oh, nobody's invented a good story yet in terms of like nobody's invented a good crafting system yet. It's 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 story is is one of the easier things to work on in a video game compared to all the complex systems and mechanics. And the number of very good main quest stories in Bethesda games, I haven't played all of them. I'm not sure I've played a great main story yet. Oblivion's pretty good. And Morrowind's pretty good. That's fine. I haven't played those. Fallout 3, I did enjoy all those issues with it. But uh, I, I just wanted to add, on top of all that, why no alien, humanoid aliens? Like, why, Like you've got Elder Scrolls. I know it's technically uh, your original just stuff. cowards. But why, like, and even, okay, if you didn't want to make aliens base level, like, with living everyone a la Mass Effect or Elder Scrolls or whatever... I think it would have been great halfway through you discover aliens be like, oh, that's the fucking twist this game's doing. And, and then, then the fucking uh, no, but yeah. then the fucking multiverse thing happens and you're well, like, oh, shit. Like that like, could have been like we also spoiler mentioned uh, crossed out in in the discord chat. The reveal when you go back to NASA um I thought that should have they either should have front loaded that mission to be like the first or second one or kept you out of out of soul for the whole game and never talk about it like like humanity just left and nobody's nobody remembers it they've yeah, forgotten about it yeah, we don't and then they talk send you back it, yeah. to earth and it's like this big deal you're like oh, it's earth it's that like uh, that the end of battlestar when sorry spoilers for battlestar they get to earth and you're like Wow, it's it, Earth. It also um, would have been better wait. if the people responsible were still alive or the basis for the future government or whatever was based on a lie that you also discovered on Earth. Like, mm -hmm. yes, that would have yeah. been great. But it's, nothing you find out on Earth has any consequences because you tell anyone that they go, oh, that sucks. Earth got fucked like that, man. That really mm -hmm. that yeah. does suck. This, this game is just like mediocre as fuck across the board. And there's a handful of really cool things. And there's only a handful of completely garbage turn the game off awful things. So you end up just kind of stewing in this six out of 10, seven out of 10 thing the whole time. Ooh, I, and I, I think I would give it like a four. <laughs> that's fair. Dang. That's fair. But I, I think what I'm trying to say is there's there's the uh, there's the, you know, the uh, the saying it's greater than the sum of its parts. Mm hmm where if you look at each individual part, you say it's not doing anything in particular good, but when you put it all together, it works really well, better than mm -hmm. it should. And then there's the opposite, which is like it's worse than the sum of its parts, where it's mm -hmm. not doing anything terribly, but you put it together and it's terrible. Uh, Starfield is just right down the fucking middle. Basically, every single system you look at, you're like, look, it's got problems, but it works. You know, the combat feels OK, but it's not really working. It's got starship building, which is cool, but you don't really do anything with it, et cetera, et cetera. Right mm -hmm. down the fucking line. And at the end of it, you just go, why did I play that game? Why am I playing the game? I'm not enjoying it, but I'm not hating it. And it's just real fucking milk toast. Mm -hmm. And that's upsetting. I have a couple, yeah. I have just like a couple other notes that I can shotgun on my like bullet points on my list. Yeah. Um, I wrote, why can't I persuade my way onto random ships to capture them that way? Why are my options only ever trade, attack, or ask for random info? I kept wondering if after specking into more persuasion, if I would ever be able to be like, hey, can I come on your ship and see, you know, I, I'm just, you know, I'm really fascinated with uh, different grav gravity drives can i come look at yours and then piracy my way that way but never was yeah. that an option um i wrote don't force me to be a cop because i felt <laughs> like so many storylines kept what are you talking about? railroading cops me are, into, cops are good guys they kept railroading me into being a cop like, holy shit is that really is like one of the few political stances that they take throughout the game which is like back the blue blue lives matter it really is that's what Holy i fuck. sided i sided with the uc in the crimson fleet uc storyline wow because i my character Instead. when i i had i had blue not realized matter. that i had picked up contraband and so when i got caught i'm like i just want to get out of this and so i was just like saying yes to get away 
um, yeah. oh, and then feeling oh. like I wasn't sure if if I then left to try to go do my own thing if the uc would start like tracking to try to track me down i'm like the uc is everywhere i just need to go along with this for as long as it takes to get them off my back well um, see that's interesting that you think that was a choice because that's how you get into the crimson fleet like if you say no to them i don't think that leads anywhere no i know but i kept i kept then uh subtly undermining the crimson fleet. right right that's the exact same thing i'm doing but i consider oh. that siding like it's funny that you thought you had a choice there which i'm pretty sure the game did not offer you a choice there. Oh. <laughs> oops, <laughs> oops. Um, yeah uh i wrote a uh, ship ui should be diegetic in first person aboard ships i understand there's a lot of different cockpits that would have been difficult to implement but it was frustrating to me that there was ui floating in front of other ui when i was <laughs> yeah. in first person on the ship so at some point i just went third person when i was in space and i just left it there um uh photo mode's good oh i will say the the news network in new atlantis you can uh, get a quest to go like tell them your story and then a couple other times you can tell them other stories and then sometimes you'll hear the broadcast of the interview that That's you cool. did um that was kind of neat i had I, uh why no space uh, radio give me a yeah, yeah, space yeah, yeah, radio. Um, yeah, there was no radio at all, which is one of the best things about Starfield. It, like, I mean, you don't, you don't have to games. make up new music. I mean, you could have, but you could have just been like, here's the classics, man. We abolished music, so here's the classics. <laughs> I think, I think that's all I've got. All she wrote. I mean, that's all of this initial bit. I have fifteen hundred words into a script about the story in another document. And how good um, it is. No. <laughs> no, um, that was my inner Todd asking. <laughs> yeah, I think I think especially it was especially bad for me to come to this after uh, steamrolling my way through Armored Core three times in a row to get to the true ending, because um, that game is so tight, and then even narrative wise, it's much more uh, easy to grasp than other FromSoft games, um, and then like each playthrough from new game plus to new game plus plus is like sort of the same story but branching off in interesting directions but like building they they know that you've already played it before so it's like building off that so that by the time you get to the mm -hmm. true ending you're like oh man yeah this rocks jake i forgot um, to tell you i beat armored core six <gasps> Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you get to this one boss up. who has all these missiles and he just kills you over and over again and that's the ending. It's oh crazy. yeah, they roll, they roll credits after Balteus. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Um, Anyways, I didn't actually beat Armored it. Core Rocks. That's and stupid boss. It's, Armored Core 6 might be it's currently well, they, they I think my it. personal goatee. Yeah, I, think they, I can be I, one I think... of the I'm going to get to be one of those FromSoft snobs now who's like I beat all the bosses before they got nerfed. Yeah, they nerfed um, him in a patch, and then mm -hmm. I'm sure you could just look up cheese builds now and nope. be better at it. I'm never playing well. It I did it. I did it for real, and I'm gonna get a T-shirt that says that. <laughs> It'll be on your gravestone. I get to be one of those get good snobs now. Jeez, I've waited my whole life for this. God, fuck. Uh, and okay, final thoughts on Starfield before we eject it into the space like James Doohan's ashes. It blows, man. It was a yeah. real letdown. It was I'm more like I'm not I'm not sad and I'm not mad. I'm just Disappointed. like <laughs> frustrated. It's very frustrating because the stuff that is good is teasing me towards a game that is really exceptional and then everything just falls flat. Um yeah, like Ian said, it's it's worse than the sum of its parts. Yeah, um, I think the big frustrating thing for me was if this. Why the fuck do they keep getting triple A treatment if this is the level of shit they put out? You know, like if this came out and it was like a weird little indie game and it was 30 bucks, you'd be like, you know what? It was fun trying it. Uh, it has some cool stuff going on, but overall doesn't quite work. I'm just really fucking pissed that the, this is treated like a triple A game. People are giving it triple A reception. They're giving it triple A scores. And, and like you said, Jake, like even, uh, you know, GameSpot's getting shit for giving it a seven out of ten. And that is generous. And it's just like 
they're they're going to keep doing it. Somebody's got to yeah. stop them. Stop I mean, them from s- taking all this money from the games industry and getting all this attention when they keep making shitty games like this. Yeah. Shitty's too much, but still. Like I know like, I said really. I said right at the top of it that I'm I'm very much a narrative first enjoyer of all forms of media. So like I can watch a movie with like you know lame cinematography and bad editing if the story is really good um ideally i want all those things to be really good but i've watched a lot of movies that are like super low budget that just have really good stories and really good performances um and i've played games even that like it's whatever that that meme that was going around for a while of like sonic is sitting and he's like i want shorter games with worse graphics made by people that are paid more um where like i i could easily do shorter games with worse graphics that just have really great stories um and that was i think i mentioned this in the discord um starfield felt to me at so many points like bethesda had this idea for a single player game but then ian like you said they only know how to make big sprawling rpg um yeah because i that all through that main quest i was like I'm just, I'm just, you're forcing me to play the game one way when I really want to play it a different way. Um, and it just felt to me really like they had this, they had an idea for a single player game and then they just made it into a big open world mess. Yeah. And I, I was going to say, like, you got a point there too, because like in Fallout and Skyrim and Oblivion, like, you're saving the world basically. So, like, it's hard to disagree with saving the world, where in Star Citizen, or in Star Citizen, Starfield, sorry, a finished game, Starfield, um, you are just like, like, why would I want to, like, you're saying, Jake, like, it's perfectly reasonable to be like, no, like, yeah, Yeah, take the artifact, like, no, and they should let you do that. Mm -hmm. Jettison the cargo. Oh, I also, sorry, very, very brief, I know I keep having very brief thoughts, but um, (laughs) the... Same. The exploration you, you, to to discover other stuff is a much more deliberate. You have to be deliberate about it, um, because like in New Vegas or in Skyrim, you can just kind of wander. Um, but because this is so much like node to node, essentially, you <laughs> have to be proactive about seeking new stuff out. It's not just going to stumble across your path especially along the main quest because you're really just like point a to point b to point c um which i thought that was super weird for a game that is again supposedly all about exploration that they um are making it very difficult to actually find interesting stuff to do yeah but um okay before we end this uh jake uh i can start with ian actually out of 10 What's your what's your uh, what's your score here? I think I'm at a six out of ten. Six out of ten, Jake. I said it earlier. I think a four. I like the art direction. Uh, the soundtrack is really good. Um, but for me, the story just stumbles too much. Um, that's the reason I go into a lot of games, and uh, I was just left with a very bad taste in my mouth. Um, okay, so four out of ten, you said? Yeah, but between me and Ian, it's a ten out of ten. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I think I went into this conversation feeling six out of ten. That's what I wrote in my Notion document today. But I think it might be a five out of ten. Um, which is, uh, which is kind of wild. I will also point out, people giving other people shit, like, I, I mean, say what you will about Greg Miller. Great guy. Love him sponsor us um no uh but people being like you gave it a three out of uh three or six people are saying you gave it a six out of ten how are you playing it how have you new game plus it seven times how is that a six out of ten and again i say how many shitty games do you spend hours playing just because you enjoy one aspect of it and on top of all of that First of all, I don't even think he gave it a score, and people were like, he gave it a 3 out of 5, which is not a 6 out of 10. Like, you don't just double that and get a 6 out of 10. Um, like, yeah, but also... Like what? What, a 7? Yeah, but even at a 7, like, you can enjoy things. Like, if I knew yeah. about that, that 
New Game Plus thing early, I would have just railroaded it the same exact way and probably enjoyed the game a lot more like Greg Miller. Like, what, like, what are you talking about? Uh, it just frustrates me every time when, even when we were first airing the show for GameSpot on stream, people were like, how can you, why are you planning uh, social media content around a 7 out of 10? Just be like, the fuck are you talking about? Because you fuckers won't stop clicking on it. That's <laughs> yeah, why. Like, we have good taste. You don't. And unfortunately, like, we have to cater to me? you idiots. <laughs> I kind of like a lot of games that are God, seven out of you imagine, ten. Could you imagine if he said that on a GameSpot stream? That would be <laughs> fucking incredible. I'm sorry, we have taste. People suck. I hate people. Uh, folks, uh, I think that's going to be it uh, for, for the Starfield, right? Are we done? Yeah. Look yeah, out for Jake's yeah, video. Oh, fuck that game. Fuck that game. Okay, I'm going to turn the spoiler the spoilers off. Um, That's it for, for local chat. This is episode uh, 100... 139. Fuck. Um, I'm going <laughs> to hit the outro button and we can get out of here. Does that work for everyone? Mm. Yeah, please. Thank you. Folks, episode 139 of this year's podcast is brought to you by Lemons. Squeeze them. Uh, moving on. Uh, Starfield spoilers were brought to you by the worst game I've played this year, probably. Um mm. You can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to our link tree where you can find our YouTube where my lovely Galactic Empires video is. Uh, or you can go buy Good some video. merch. You can go see our AO3 stuff. That's all up there on the uh, fanfic there. Oh, I learned boy. fan fiction isn't necessarily porn. So there's a free tip for you. <laughs> um, we will be back this weekend with more fanfic uh, one of these days here. And then Tuesday, I think, is more Roblox. I've been yep. your host, William Yosefitz Crispers. You can find me on Twitter at Hunty70. You can find Ian on Twitter at Think Gibson. You can find Jake on Twitter at Jake Terrio. Underscore. Underscore Jake Terrio. Underscore Jake Terrio. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>